I mentioned that a linear transformation can certainly take vectors of one size and map them to vectors of the same size, and in fact, often it does that. Uh, and you can realize, if you think about it, that that would be a square matrix, right? If I have a matrix that has the same number of rows and columns, then that means that the input vector I multiply by is going to be the same size as the output vector I get. And it turns out that that situation is so common and important that it has its own name, and it is called a linear operator. So a linear transformation or a linear map is when you're going from one size vector to another, could be the same size, might not. But if they are the same size, then it goes by the special additional name of a linear operator. And it's interesting to look at what that plays out as when you look at it in coordinates. So let's take an example here. Let's say I've got a matrix. Uh, and let's just do a simple one right here, zero, 1, 0, 0, 1. So that's the identity matrix, as you remember which we use the word, the letter I for sometimes. Let's think about what this does to points in a plane. So let's say I've got an x-axis and a y-axis, and of course I can have negative values here too. Let's take a point uh, 5, negative 2. So that's a good, healthy point, 5, negative 2. So this is something which I could multiply my linear operator by and I would get something else out. And what am I going to get out? I'm going to get out 5, 2, right? Because 1, 0 times 5, 2 gives you 5. 0, 1 times 5, 2 gives you 2. That's why this is called the identity matrix, because the input is identical to the output, okay? So that is going to map this point to itself, and this point to itself, and this point to itself, and this point to itself, etc. okay? Not too interesting. Let's do another example. Let's say I have a matrix make it red this time. And this one's going to be uh, 1, 0, 0, 2. So what's that going to do if I multiply it by 5, 2? Well, that's going to give me back 5, 4, right? Because 1, 0 dot producted with 5, 2 gives you 5. 0, 2 dot producted with 5, 2 gives you 4. And so what that's going to do is take this point right here, and it's going to map it to that point right there, 5, negative 4. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant all these to be negatives, didn't I? My bad. Sorry about that. That, of course, would give you the same answer if we had done it positive. It would just show up on a different place on the graph, right? In fact, let's do that one. So 5, 2 would map to 5, 4. And what would uh, uh, 1, 0 map to here if I multiplied this operator by that, if this was my input and I multiplied it by that thing, uh, then I would get back um, 1, 0 times 1, 0 is 1, and 0, 2 times 1, 0 is 0. So 1, 0 maps to the same point. And you can see what's happening here, right? What this is going to do is it is going to expand everything in the y-axis direction. Any point I have is going to get mapped to a point twice as far off the uh, x-axis, twice as far in the y direction uh, as it started, and its x position is going to be unchanged. If it started off at 1 for the x value, it's going to stay at 1. If it started off with 5 as the x value, it's going to stay at 5, right? So this matrix right here, the value or the, the purpose and the function of that linear operator is to stretch everything in the y direction. Do another example. Let's say we have uh, 1 half, 0, 0, 1 half. What is that going to do to our points here? Well, pretty obviously, if I start out with, let's say, 2, 2, if that is my input to this function, my output is going to be 1, 1, right? So it's going to map this point here to that point there. And what if I have the point... Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. So 4, negative 1, if I multiply this blue matrix by that, what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to get 1 half 0 times this is 2, and 0, 1 half times this is negative 1 half. And so that is going to map this point uh, right here to that point right there to negative one half, right? So this thing is shrinking everything towards the origin. It's basically making everything half as far away from the origin as it did, okay? Interesting effects you can get here. Let's do another one. 
this one maybe becomes not so obvious. So my green one here is going to be this. Let's make this negative 1, 0, 0, 1. What is that going to do if I use that as a linear operator to map points in the two-dimensional space? So let's say I have the point 4, negative 1. Let's say I multiply this bad boy times 4, negative 1. What do I get out? Well, I'm going to get out the greenified version, which is going to be negative 4 and negative 1. So I mapped this point right here, 4, negative 1, to negative 4, negative 1. And if I had the point 2, 2, if you work that out, that's going to work out to the point negative 2, 2. And if I had the point negative 3, negative 7, that's going to map to the point uh, 3, negative 7, right? So all we've done is flip the sign of our first entry here. And so what this is going to do is flip everything across the y-axis. This is a flip operation that basically gives me uh, you know, the, the, the mirror image of uh, whatever I had. And you can imagine these points, right? So imagine instead of just doing one point at a, one at, at a time, imagine if I had a whole image, right? I'd taken a picture of somebody on my camera, took a selfie or something, and I applied these different transformations to it. I'd be stretching me in different directions. I would be squishing me, maybe make me fatter, maybe make me wider. I'm flipping it, so now I get the mirror image on the other side, right? Obviously, there's a linear operator, you can work this out, that would flip the other way, right? So instead of uh, changing the x value to be the negative of what it was, it would change the y value to be the negative of what it is, right? So each one of those things has a certain function, a certain uh, behavior that it imposes upon those points and translates them in a, in a certain uh, direction, maps them to a certain thing, right? Let's do this one. This is my favorite one because it's kind of uh, uh, interesting. So suppose I took this thing, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 0, negative 1, 1, 0. Now what effect is that going to have on my points here? So let's give uh, ourselves some points. And let's say we have the point 4, 1, and I multiply that by this guy. What is the effect of this linear operator? That is going to take it to be 0, negative 1, dot producted with this is going to be negative 1, and this dot producted with this is going to give us 4. Okay, So 4, 1 translated to the point negative 1, 4. So that guy got translated there. Okay, uh, what about this point here? Uh, what about negative, or excuse me, 1 comma negative 1? If I multiply that guy through here, 1, negative 1, and I multiply by this blue matrix, I'm going to get 0, negative 1 times 0, negative 1. Uh, that's going to give you, um, this is 0, negative 1, dot producted with this is going to give you 1, and 1, 0 times this is going to give you 1. So that took this point and it translated it to this point. Interesting, let's see if we can see the pattern here. Suppose I took the point negative two, negative four. So that's this one down here, negative two, negative four. And suppose I multiplied my blue matrix times that guy, what am I gonna get? And the answer is zero, negative one, dot product with this guy is gonna give me four. And one zero dot product with this guy is going to give me negative two. So negative two, negative four is going to translate to the point four, negative two, which is right there. So this guy is going like that. Now I don't know if you can see the pattern here, but the pattern is a rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise. That's what this thing is doing. Every point is going to be rotated. And if you basically took a bunch of points here, and you drew where they all go to, it basically does this thing. It's rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise, no matter where they are. Very, very interesting. And in fact, this one looks very different uh, when I first put it up, but maybe you'll see what it does. I'm going to say 0.707 of all things. 
That's actually roughly the square root of 2 over 2. That's why that ends up being uh, a thing. Uh, but for now, let me just kind of amaze you here. Uh, what if I say 0 0.707, 0 0.707 on the bottom, right? So it's a bunch of 0 0.707s except that guy's negative, okay? Now what happens if I multiply this by something? Uh, I have some vector, uh, you know, 2, 3, and I multiply this and I get something. So you can work that out on your calculator, but what that's going to do is that's going to end up giving you a 45 degree rotation. So that's going to that's going to rotate it not 90 degrees counterclockwise, but 45 degrees counterclockwise. Uh, and that's because uh, the sign of the angle that you're moving it on here ends up being 0 0.707. In fact, in general, a rotation matrix, if you have an angle theta that you want to rotate the points by, you can take this matrix here and you can say cosine theta in the upper left, negative sine theta in the upper right, plain old sine theta without the negative in the bottom left, and cosine theta in the bottom right. So if you take this angle, you say, hey, I want to rotate my points, you know, 27.4 degrees. If you take that and figure out the cosine and the sine of that angle and fill in this matrix with the appropriate entries here, so in the case of 45 degrees, it turns out that the cosine of it is 0 0.707 and the sine of it is also 0 0.707. Uh, and that's how I got this matrix right here, uh, which did it, um, 45 degrees counterclockwise, and if I wanted to do 90 degrees counterclockwise, you know that the cosine of 90 degrees uh, is 0, and the sine of 90 degrees is 1, and so that's how I got that matrix before that did it uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise, and of course you can make this angle negative to go clockwise, right? But the point is that no matter what you plug in here for those things, that gives you a rotation matrix, which obviously is very useful, right? If you think about anything in graphics, it's constantly doing scaling, shrinking, flipping, rotating. I mean, that's just part and parcel of the way Mario Kart or whatever works, right? It's constantly taking tons and tons and tons of points, and it is running them through a linear operator, and that linear operator is able to do things like rotate or scale, etc. Now, one thing that's interesting, and we won't really understand this fully until the next episode, but it turns out you can take a bunch of operators and link them together. So we haven't talked about how to multiply matrices together yet. We're going to talk about that in the next episode. Uh, but if you imagine this here, just sort of do a suspension of disbelief, imagine if I had a scaling matrix that made everything four times as big, and then I multiplied it by uh, a rotation matrix that maybe multiplied, or excuse me, rotated it by uh, 45 degrees in the clock counterclockwise direction. And then I did one uh, where it did, you know, our little flip across the y-axis, negative 1, 0, 0, 1. And I multiplied that by a bunch of points, like maybe 7, negative 3, or whatever. And I get out an answer. Turns out that that operation will do the scaling and do the rotation and do the flip to that point. So if I have a combination of different kinds of transformations I want to do, if I have a combination of different ways I want to transform or move that point, I can string all those together as a sequence of linear operators and go bam, 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 do all those matrix multiplication, matrix vector multiplications, and we're able to transform the point in a lot of very interesting ways.